Um, it's funny you mentioned Star Trek in that book that's a bestseller for you. I met William Shatner uh, this this year at the, it was like a blockchain conference in Texas, uh-huh. and one of our companies we invested in was doing his digital collectible, and mm-hmm. I, I don't fanboy very often, but yeah. I was like, I gotta meet Bill. And so we, we hung out with him, and I watched a bunch of old Star Treks, and then there was, there was one where he was actually talking to a computer and asking it to, to create a summary, and it was yeah. just very AI. Yeah. And he's like, okay, computer, can you summarize all this stuff? Yeah. And it came back with a response. Yeah. And I was like, wow, I never really realized that that was kind of chat GPT back in the it, 60s. Exactly, there's a lot, and it's often accidental. I mean, when I wrote the Star Trek book, and, and um, there's lots of things that have come to pass, but it's only because creative people imagining solutions to problems often come up with similar solutions. It's not as if science fiction caused the science, but sometimes, you know, to scan you, right? The Star Trek was created before even ultrasound. But obviously it's better, to, if I want to find out what's going on inside of you, to be able to have some way of learning about without opening you up. And, and we were talking earlier about people who are older, and Bill, who happens to be another friend of mine, is, uh, is uh, 92. Yeah, 93. And we, we just did a podcast, and it's hysterical. You should watch it. I, uh, we, we've done a few things together, and every time we do, it just breaks me up. He's so... On, on uh, interesting and funny and on the ball again he, when I think of people uh, when I think of getting a lot older and I, I look to people like him and say okay there's hope yeah he just went into space he's still completely irreverent yeah. very opinionated he, yeah, absolutely and everybody loves him at the conference everybody went gaga yeah yeah and and because he doesn't because he is fun yeah. and he and and he doesn't take himself too seriously and he's, yeah, it's hysterical. He reminds me of my uncle. I told him that on the, on the my, who, who's now passed away, but was one of my favorite relatives. And, and um, yeah, and, both, and we're both, of course, Canadian, which is really part of the, you know, another secret. Canadian mafia. Yeah, yeah. Is there anybody you don't know? I mean, you did stage <laughs> shows with Johnny Depp. You're doing movies <laughs> where you star in with Werner Herzog. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, come on. There's, there's a lot of people I'm sure I don't know. Oh, my gosh, but, you're plugged uh, in. But anyway. Um, just with AI quickly. You know, you're a physicist, and mm-hmm. a lot of people make the comparison of technology that can be destructive to humanity by going back and looking at the atomic bomb and fission mm. and fusion. Obviously, the movie Oppenheimer just came yeah. out, and so it's the only example people grasp to when they say, here are these scientists working on a technology that can not only kill the scientists, but kill everybody else. And AI is the only real equivalent that we yeah. think of in that sense. Sure, in fact, I'm partly, I was for a dozen years the head of the board of sponsors of the Bolton the Atomic Scientists, which by the way was created by Oppenheimer and Einstein. They were the first heads of that and I felt very honored to have that position later on. But when I was, it, it, its primary purpose was to warn people about the dangers of, nu- of nuclear war in 1947 created, you know, and, and scientists talking about the dangers of nuclear war. When I came on board in 2006 or 2007, we decided to broaden it to talk about all existential risks. So not just nuclear weapons, but the time we were concerned about biological weapons, and eventually AI became one of the things. So it's one of the things the Bulletin now focuses on. I'm not involved in the Bulletin anymore, but I'm a little, I'm, I have mixed feelings about having put all those things in the same box, because they're very different. Nuclear war can end our end humanity like that. AI is a, th- a potential existential threat, as are some aspects of biological weapons. But they're much longer term, and climate change was another one we added. But they're all very different. Uh, but it is it th- you could imagine a future. You can imagine the Terminator future, right? Which is what people imagine. Yeah. But it always amazes me that you know people imagine the Borg or, or or that kind of thing instead of instead of things where where AI really uh, is a useful tool and. And who says the future is human? I mean, I, don't, I mean, it sounds awful to say that, but um, it could be the long term that biology has to incorporate aspects of, of, of what, you would, what you would call artificial intelligence, which I think is neither artificial nor intelligent at this point. Uh, and, but it does have that does have the, you can imagine the technology, certainly, for example, if you put together AI and nuclear weapons, right? If, AI had the decision when to launch nuclear weapons, then that's really of concern. But you know, it's, it, of course it's of concern, but right now what most people don't realize is in the United States, the president can decide to launch nuclear weapons without, and is the only person that can do that. No one else has to approve it. So do you feel better about AI or 
a few years ago, Donald Trump being, you know, so you got to worry. It's, we somehow think, oh, if humans are involved, the better decisions will be made. But that may not always be so clear. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's a double-edged sword. And, but all, all really fascinating technologies in one way or another have impacts for good or bad. I mean, industrialization did too, right? And, you, and it, it changed the world and it, it caused a lot of problems. Um, sweatshops and, and those kind of factories and in England early on. But we, in principle, in principle, we, we are rational human beings who can then look and try and improve things. I, I, I mean in principle because it happens too, too little, but we can, we can look at things and try and moderate them. And, and the best thing we can do is talk about the options in advance so we're prepared, as I say, because then, because that kind of technology does evolve very quickly. Technology as a whole evolves very quickly, m much more quickly than our ability as humans to fully adapt to it. But we can at least think about it in advance and try and imagine and discuss so we're more prepared. And who knows what the future is going to bring, but that, the future is terrifying, but it's also exhilarating. <laughs> and that's what makes it so exciting. Also, nuclear weapons are quite an example of us being in control of them. I mean, so far we have. It's amazing, right? Over yeah. 70 years, we have, yeah. they haven't been used since, since Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I actually am surprised. And I have said, I don't, I, as I often say, I don't make predictions about the future except for two trillion years in the future, where it's easy and then no one's around to check. But, uh, but it, it would be surprising if nuclear weapons were not used against a civilian population sometime this century. Now, what will happen about that? Um, I don't know. And I'd love to be wrong in that prediction. So yeah, it's anyway. still one of our most dangerous yeah. threats, one yeah. of our most existential risks. And, and, we, and people don't talk, people talk about AI more than nuclear weapons yeah. when, when there's still a thousand nu nuclear weapons on each side of the US and Russia that are on, on hair trigger alert. Yeah. But people are some more, more worried about ChatGPT, and it, it's kind of interesting to me. So Jim Rickards has just recorded a video that's not available to anyone in the public, and he's gonna be talking about how this upcoming recession is gonna be fast, it's gonna be bloody, it's gonna be nasty. But at the same time, he's gonna show you how you can position yourself to profit from all of this chaos. Now, we've made this video only available to our viewers. Go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim, Watch that immediately. I can't say enough good things about Jim Rickards. He understands the global economic system better than any guest I've ever had on London Real. His predictions are almost uncannily true, and you can learn how to profit from his vision, from his expertise, and his understanding of economics. So go to LondonReal.tv forward slash Jim or click the link below. It's an excellent, excellent look on what's gonna happen in the future and how you can position yourself to profit from that Jim is one of the best in the business, one of my favorite guests on London Real, and he's very, very good at predicting the future and showing us all to profit from it. So click the link and I hope you enjoy. Hey, do you want to profit from crypto? Then join my DeFi Academy. The Crypto DeFi Academy will help you create generational wealth. But don't take my word for it. Listen to my students. When I first got into crypto, I remember thinking to myself, I need to learn more. Brian Rose, learning crypto, learning DeFi, gotta do it. I am so grateful that I jumped in and did this. I had to break through some limiting beliefs that I can do this, that I can afford this, that I can be in this. It challenges um, the things that are deeply rooted within us. Joining DeFi Academy has been one of the best decisions I have made on my blockchain journey. This course was a life changer, a game changer, a huge eye opener coming from knowing practically nothing at the speed of the learning over the over four weeks was just fantastic. The information you provided in this class was invaluable. I feel far more confident in my next steps. We took complex concepts and made them easier to understand. What's different than so many other ones is it just doesn't tell you what to do. It uh, actually makes you do it. This is for people who are serious about becoming traders. This is the way it should be done. I realized from this learning experience again that it is not about what you learn, but about who you learn it from. The energy was insane. I've, I've never experienced such incredible energy on a live call. Brian Rose, you, you are a legend, my friend. It's the only thing 
in the market where you can get all information and learn everything what you need to know. Everything is so clear and so well done. And I am um, just forever grateful for this program. It made me feel so much more confident about crypto than I did before. I did not anticipate how passionate I was going to become about it. It's got to be like a big learning experience for me, not just in the crypto space, but just uh, an overall uh, balance of life. What I've learned is, you know, how to take ownership, you know, of my life in a way that um, I really, I really hadn't before. Yeah, you can't put a price on that, really. I would recommend it to anybody top notch. Excellence does not come cheap. You know, so if you want excellence, you gotta pay for it, but it's so worth it. Pull the trigger. That's what this course is about. You're not gonna regret it, really. It's amazing. Thank you, Brian and team. So what are you waiting for? Crypto is happening now. Click the link below, submit your application, and let me mentor you on how to create generational wealth and build the decentralized financial infrastructure of the future.